This week on The Verdict, we are looking at 2019's horror films. Welcome to The Verdict. I'm Lizzie Pegram. I'm Devontae Banks. And I'm Paul Shuhart. Okay, so uh, released the summer of 2019, <laughs> a great year, right? <laughs> Midsummer follows a young couple and their group of friends as they travel to Sweden for a special Midsummer festival. What they expected was hot babes and shrooms, but what they got was gruesome ceremonies and hairs in their food. Take a look at this fever dream, I mean, trailer for Midsummer. <laughs> I told you that I want to go to that festival in Sweden. No, you said it would be cool to go. Yeah, and then I got the opportunity and I decided Look, I to do it. I don't mind you going. I just wish you would have told me. That's all. Dude, she needs a therapist. You've been wanting out of this stupid relationship for like a year now. And don't forget about all of the beautiful Swedish women you'll meet in June. Okay, guys. That's not her again. Seriously? Babe, what's happening? Danny. I was so very sorry to hear about what happened. I'm sorry. I invited Danny to come to Sweden. You know what she's been going through? Christian says you've got this special week planned. It's sort of a crazy festival. Special ceremonies and dressing up. That sounds fun. Unbelievable. Welcome and happy midsummer. School! What time is it? 9 p.m. That can't be right. The sky is blue. This is what 9 p.m. is like here. <laughs> How long have you two been together? Just over three and a half years. Four years. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? It's like another world. Tomorrow's a big day. Is it scary? What is it? It has special properties. <sighs> what am I going through? We just need to acclimate. I don't want to acclimate. I want to go. Absolutely not. What's happening? I don't know why you invited us. That's why you look so guilty right now, because you know. We only do this every 90 years. I was most excited for you to come. All right, uh, so you guys trying to go to Sweden with me this summer? Uh, not to this place. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going. If I, can, uh, if I can win and be on top just like our young girl here, let's go. I mean, <laughs> I mean you guys don't look so good. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. You probably won't make it out, but I might be the May Queen. So you can leave me there. <laughs> or you end up with flowers in your eyes. Like, I'll just oh, spin yeah. from the <laughs> it's so cool, like uh, the special effects, how they're like throbbing. Like, I think that's awesome. That was crazy. I think like it wasn't until the third time I had actually watched it that I had like, uh, I thought it was mostly just like the flowers uh, that we had seen moving around and like when they had that feast towards the end it was like the food was moving but then like if I looked back at the trees and they were all still moving oh yeah well, I, I didn't, like, we didn't talk even about notice. spoilers uh -huh. are we allowed to talk about spoilers yeah oh yeah all right well if yeah. we're talking about spoilers my favorite subtle detail is if you're actually looking in the background of some of the scenes mm -hmm. you actually see her sister with her gas mask on oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. even in the trees or even in the rocks if you look in the background they'll form her sister's face what? yeah, yeah it's the, insane yeah, yeah. Um, like I think right when they uh, go get her to graduate her, uh, you if you like you've paid attention real close in the back, you actually see his sister, her, her sister. Yeah, that's pretty. Oh insane. man, yeah. I was really hoping. It's the type of movie where it's kind of <laughs> like an Edgar Wright movie where it's yeah. like you just gotta keep freeze framing it because yeah. there's so much symbolism <laughs> and stuff. But I love how A24 they like, especially in this movie, they work with like mirrors a lot. Like especially in the beginning scenes, like we won't see the character directly. We'll just see them like from the reflection, and they're just talking normally like we don't see a close-up of them at all they always work with the cam like the mirror angles and it bounced off each other I really like that and like when what's her 
<laughs> we can have a whole segment about that toxic boyfriend, man. Okay, or well, I can have a whole well, segment. Well, here's the thing, right? Here's the whole thing about that. I, I like the, it's not like, like, yeah, it's a toxic relationship, mm -hmm. but it's not like he's necessarily a villain. No, he's just stupid. Yeah, he's yeah. Because yeah. he's definitely a jerk to, um, I, I want to call him Cheaty from the good oh, place. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I, I, I want to call him William Jackson Harper. Like, he's a real jerk to his character, too. So yeah. it's like you don't feel bad for him. But like, The guy with the thesis? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But let's pull back for, the mo for a moment, right? Like, he's this guy who wants to break up with this girl. Then her sister kills herself and her mom and dad, so yep. he can't break up with her. He's already on edge. And then he's like, at this point, like, screw it. I'm going to do the thesis thing. Yeah, like, she, if it wasn't a horror movie. She tags along yeah. to Sweden and stuff like that. And there, <laughs> him and his buddies are like, there's going to be so many hot babes there. And he's like, <laughs> And I, I wish my girlfriend's coming. However, this redhead's been eyeballing me all week. And then I got a hair in my pie. So you know what that means. <laughs> I uh, do know what that means. Huh? I said, I do know what that I means. I do, but that means like <laughs> yeah. at that some point when it's like you see all the fold. <laughs> I don't even think I'm allowed to explain yeah. it. Well, actually, they set that, they, and the craziest part is they set up every single thing in like the first 20 minutes. Yeah. Because like the opening mural has the entire movie on it. And even him talking to his bro sets it up. When yeah. they're at the waitress at the beginning, he's like, bro, you should be getting that waitress pregnant. Yeah. Like, that's a setup for the end. You know, the girl serves them food and stuff. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, it's full yeah. circle. And yeah. then, like, the big the big uh, house that all, like, the, the people from, like, from babies to, like, what, 30 or something? Yeah. And they all sleep in yeah. that big room. And all that folk art on the walls. And there's, like, there's, like, bears and plenty of, like, hidden messages. But, yeah, I think I've said pubes on TV. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think we said that last time. I'm like, well, that's anatomy. <laughs> I think I can say that. Hey, blame Ari Aster. We didn't make yeah, the movie. I mean, that's, that's what you get in your pies. Yeah. Must be a love thing. Because, like, she, like, yeah. you know, she, like, carves this little piece of wood and sneaks it under his bed. And then, yeah. like, and then she, like, I don't like that little redhead at all. The only time she talks when she was, <laughs> the only time she talks is after he, he falls in love with her and puts a baby in her and then she's like I can feel the baby inside of me <laughs> <laughs> well the implication is that happens to the dude from uh, we're the Millers as well yeah because remember oh, the, yeah. the implication is that that ceremony happened we just didn't see it yeah, yeah. what was yeah. his name Matt or something yeah, yeah that was a whole thing and then yeah. until uh oh man there was uh, and then um, Connie and that other couple that was from England that when they saw we didn't even we haven't even talked about the yeah, ceremony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, why, we got to talk about yeah. the special effects. I don't care what I was talking about. <laughs> Sorry, Connie, but we got to get back to this. Uh, you know what I like about this movie is that it takes so long to start. You know, because you like it really just like sucker punches you. Yeah. Like, it's like the like the two uh, uh, old couples jumped up, like are walking up there, and I was watching this with my mother, and I was like, I wonder what's gonna happen next, and then it mm. happens, and I was like, Oh wow. Because no, it's, it's so eerie throughout. And <laughs> oh. I I feel like my, my like nerves were up to here. I'm like, because I had heard about this movie that hey, something really graphic's gonna happen and it's gonna be like, wow. <laughs> and then like I'm I'm sitting and there's nothing really happening besides like her family getting killed by carbon monoxide. Uh, yeah. And I'm just sitting there the whole time, like, I was, like, nervous. I'm like, oh, something's about to happen. Something's about to happen. And then it, it does. And I was just like, oh, those are really cool special effects. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that looks really good. <laughs> well, the really cool thing is he didn't make up any of these rituals. These are all really real rituals he looked up. And no also way. another really oh, cool wow. thing. Yeah. And another cool thing is, I, I don't know if you guys know, is he tried to make it look like a Wes Anderson movie. Uh -huh. So it's oh, like one I, of those things where it's like you're seeing this horrific imagery, but you're like, but it's beautiful. <laughs> but it's, it's gorgeous here. Man, like, and, like, Devontae's here to watch all the theory YouTube videos and come and bring us new information. Otherwise, I won't have it. I've just watched it three times. <laughs> I can tell you, I could read some lines from the script for you, maybe. <laughs> well, another cool thing is, like, honestly, I, I shouldn't even say, like, all these takes are things I picked up. Actually, someone we're talking about later, Robert Eggers, who directed The Lighthouse, and Ari Aster are actually friends in real life, and they did a whole podcast oh, yeah, oh, yeah, kind of breaking down the differences in their filmmaking style and what they like. Yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. I really find it interesting that Ari Aster does such a feminine touch with this on Hereditary. Yeah, and yeah. And then the yeah. movies later, we're going to talk about a little bit more masculine and the may queen comes out on top as per usual <laughs> <laughs> well so do you think you're seeing double nah you're just watching us jordan pills 2019 follow-up after making his splash hit get out is about the greatest enemy we all have ourselves with winston duke starring as a nerdy patriarch and lupita nyango as the mother with a secret we'll see if mr appeals film is a sophomore slump or another notch in his belt let's check out the trailer that's a classic right there. I got five on it. Messing with that ain't no weed. What if I got 
fun one I mean. It's about drugs. It's not about drugs. It's a dope song. Don't do drugs. Get in rhythm. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Can't believe how big they've got. You hear Gabe got a boat? Oh, daddy. Ah, ah. He's kidding, right? He's not kidding. Hey, I think it's vodka clock. Oh, yeah. Where's Jason? Jason? Jason! Where were you? I didn't know if you were lost. Stick with me, and I'll keep you safe. I There's a family in our driveway. It's probably the neighbors. But y'all scare of a family? Hi, can I help you? Zora, put your shoes on. If you want to get crazy, we can get crazy. Exactly like us. They think like us. They know where we are. We need to move and keep moving. They won't stop until they kill us. Or we kill them. been tethered to a negative version of myself. What about you guys? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Every single well, day. much like this movie, um, I didn't even know that uh, these two characters, uh, or the, the main woman character, and it's been a hot minute since I've seen this movie. Uh, Adelaide? Yeah. So her and her son and the daughter had no idea they were tethers at all until I was watching a YouTube video that broke down it scene <laughs> by scene and all the theories. And, um, and that's when I learned that. I was like, oh, this is when, in this scene, you can see that how she really is a tether. I was like, she's, she's a what? <laughs> and I missed, missed that, clearly. But I, was, I watched it around the time it first came out. But wa in watching that video, I had no idea that everything, I mean, I mean, the, as far as like the, the VHS is on the, on the shelf, like everything was intentional. Yeah. Now, I don't, and I, when I'm watching this video, I'm like, are they just digging for things that are somehow related? Or was that seriously Jordan Peele's, like, vision? goal? Like, or his vision, you know? Well, that's the cool thing. The open shot kind of spoils the movie because it has Chud, the can cannibalistic humanoid, uh -huh. Underdwellers. It has that DVD uh, yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So you kind of see, like, oh, like, if you could piece this <laughs> There was that one time, that one, the girl that plays in Handmaid's Tale, the blonde one. Oh, Elizabeth. Oh, yeah. when, when their tethers come to kill them. You mean Tim uh, from Tim and Eric? Tim and Eric Tim? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, so hey, like, um, at, when I'm watching that video, it's like, so during this scene while they're getting killed, the Beach Boys <laughs> is playing. I'm like, okay, I'm following. And then he's like, and that's significant because Charles Manson likes the Beach Boys. I'm like, okay. And then Charles Manson and his followers would kill people too. And that's how that's related. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, see, what? I actually heard something different. I heard uh, the Beach Boys are playing because they talk about a different California. Right. And then we get the NWA, and then they talk about their California. There's probably yeah, but don't you guys theories. notice there's even another layer to the NWA sound? <laughs> Do you notice <laughs> the first lyric when it comes on? Yeah. Coming straight from the underground. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's oh, the yeah. that's it's the like first lead. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Like so many layers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got five on. Oh, I got, I got <laughs> and like, wasn't that like the opening subtitles were like there are like thousands of oh, like underground yeah. railroads that are still <laughs> vacant today, and then, and then on the TV we see all the little hands across the USA like holding, holding hands and holding a line. But I don't, I, cause I, since it had been a minute, I just kind of forgot the plot <laughs> a little bit. And then they, ah, I just, 
And that was a real movement, the Hands Across America. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But like, I'm trying to think, so when did, so, so it was a little girl when she got swapped with the tether, right? Yeah. When, yeah. when she had her little Michael Jackson shirt, which was significant because they all read red, they all wore, the tethers wore the red suits like Michael Jackson. Yeah. It's, it's and insane the glove. how it's all related. And the glove. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget about the glove. Yeah. yeah. And the glove, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because she, remember she loved Thriller. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And another really good significant thing, they actually referenced the Lost Boys at the beginning. Because they're like, oh, there's that movie, Shooting Down Beach. Yeah. In that movie that they were oh. shooting, it was the Lost Boys at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. I didn't even <laughs> conduct that. Oh, my God. So many insane details. <laughs> I know. And, but that's Jordan Peele for you. Yeah, he is he's... thorough. But oh, it was so good. <laughs> and then they all like, dog, like, hold on, let me try. They all took like that. So, <laughs> so annoying. I was like, oh, that's gonna. <laughs> but I guess I wouldn't talk too too good if I was never talking. <laughs> I don't know. I really like uh, this kind of stuff that they did with the Black Flag stuff. How uh, in the, uh, in the '80s, mm -hmm. how Black Flag was like uh, this, like this movement to fight the establishment, to, to be your own person, to not try to be part of this capitalist society. And then yeah. we go in the future, and we see that it's just been molded, shaped, and then repackaged back, right back after them, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I just love that about that. Well, it's uh, kind mm -hmm. of what Jeremiah 1111 11 is about, like the biblical oh, scriptures yeah. teaching yeah, and yeah, reference. Yeah. The God at a certain point is like, I'm not going to help you no more. <laughs> and that's kind of what happens. Like, she had this opportunity all those years to go and reach out to them. Like, literally, as uh, even Red says, like, we could have, you know, done this together, yeah. but you chose not to. You chose to switch places. So mm -hmm. because of that, the judgment has to come. Yeah. That's ultimately <laughs> what happens at the end. Yeah. Oh. And the odd way, they're all kind of unified at the end in a way that, you know, the upper classes are really aren't. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jordan Peele... It's a lot to take in. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, Jordan Peele also points out, so, like, even, like, uh, so even, like, the poorest people in America yeah. are still the 1% of the people in the world. So even the tether would kind of be, if you look at the rest of the world, they would, uh, the rest of the world kind of lives in those super subhuman conditions. Like, even yeah. Parasite touches on this. So even mm -hmm. them seeing the oh, poorest I of I our society... I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, <you> know, <laughs> but it's sad, like, to think that there's a bunch of people probably jealous of where you live, and, like, even though yeah. you, we're all in debt and we're cautious, like, there's a bunch of people who are like, yeah. oh, wow. Like, the grass yeah. is always greener. Yeah. I tell you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't even know what else to touch on. <laughs> what else uh, is there besides doppelgangers? Uh, you know, we were talking about the you know, materialistic nature of the movie, and I know a lot of people are like, hey, is this like the U.S.? And I was like, well, maybe it can be. You know, you, know, you can view the, uh, the title, title, title as like the U.S. Cause I mean, they literally say we're Americans. Yeah, because <laughs> you, know, yeah. Yeah. Cause you yeah. know, like That's what I had heard, that like it doubles as like us, doubles as like U.S., yeah. you know, so maybe, maybe that's true. I don't know. I haven't heard specifically from Jordan <laughs> Peele, but I'll ask him. I'll email him about it. I mean, one good thing we could talk about is the rabbits. So if you eat a bunch oh, of rabbits, oh, yeah. yeah. Because it, it ties into like Alice in Wonderland or something and falling oh, yeah. down that hole oh, and yeah. like the tunnels. Like, and I was uh, reading an interview so with Jordan much. Peele where he's afraid of rabbits because he's like, if you took the brand of a rabbit and put it into a person, you basically have Michael Myers. There are these un <laughs> unfeeling, uncaring that's like, really creatures. Unsettling. Yeah, he, he hates rabbits. Like, he is definitely scared of them. Who is? Uh, Jordan Peele. Really? Yeah, he's yeah. like definitely scared of them. And if you eat a bunch of rabbits, you're never nourished. Yeah. So the, um, so the, basically the tether, they were never nourished. Because that was the only thing they could eat was raw rabbit. And you know when she, the, the main girl, she had held up that little like, uh, little rabbit's foot at some point, and the, towards the, I think it was the beginning of the movie, and she's just staring at it like, huh, I remember one of these. <laughs> like, oh, didn't we used to eat these or something? I just, I, I can't even, I, I can't even pinpoint all the stuff that was pointed out in that, vi in that video. All the intentional things that, like, supposedly Jordan Peele had done on purpose. Yeah. I mean, has anybody asked him? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, actually, he did a really good interview with Ari Aster about this, funny enough. Oh, yeah, Ari Aster that. talks to everybody. Oh, uh, yeah, he actually <laughs> does. And but, oh, sorry. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> like, uh, like you're saying. But uh, let's talk about the next one, you know? <laughs> 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 So mine is the lighthouse. It's about two uh, two lighthouse keepers that are trying to maintain their sanity on a remote and mysterious island. Let's take a look. <laughs> Watch us fill your beans. 
weeks, two days, help me to recollect. Uh, did you know this film's actually based off my own life? Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I was Willem Dafoe. So you like so you like mermaids, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah. That's and, my life. and myself. Yeah. 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 Likes myself yeah. and <laughs> Willem Dafoe. You know, I mean that's just everyday life. For some me some could say Robert Pattinson's character is all about self love. I <laughs> love. <laughs> okay, and first of all, cheers to Robert Pattinson. He is no longer Edward from Twilight. He is now uh, a dirty lighthouse guy. I don't know what a, but he did it. He did a great job at it. I love that dude. But and like, I guess I didn't know what to. I think I think we see like foreshadowing of like the tentacles and stuff. Uh, early, kind of early on, like I think it. it Shows up at some point. I'm like, oh, that's that's gonna come back later. I feel, um, or like maybe it was in the trailer or something. But I it's something I didn't really anticipate. But I should have. <laughs> like it's gotta have like some sort of supernatural aspect. Other, other, otherwise, you're on just a big rock. For what was it like? Like, cause oh, oh yeah. Now that I'm digging into it, cause now I'm remembering. Um, but um, so like when he's talking to Willem Dafoe, and he's like, man, you, what are you talking about? You're talking a bunch of nonsense. We've we've been here. That boat left a long time ago, dude. Are you okay? <laughs> and like after he just tried to like kill him with an axe, yeah. and he was like, "Man, chill out. You just tried to kill me with that axe." Yeah. And he was like, he was "That like, was a bro moment." What? <laughs> yeah, they didn't really have those bro moments. Check, until yeah, it was just a vibe check. Yeah, they started drinking and they had a good time. Yeah, and they were like dancing together. And then yeah, at some point they're like coddling them. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading this, somebody said this on Reddit, and tell me if you guys agree. Hmm. The worst thing that happened to this movie was the marketing. Because it's a great movie, but they should have marketed it like it was a Noah Baumbach movie or something. They should have just marketed it like it was just a straight up drama. And then all that other stuff, sh you should have just found out. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Like, they didn't show that much of the market, but I think the fact that they even hinted yeah. kind of took some yeah, of the fun. I feel like yeah, I saw a trailer yeah, with yeah. all the tentacles and yeah. crap, and I was like, huh? And the mermaid, like, I never saw one with the mermaid. Yeah. I think that would be more, I think. They took yeah. some of the yeah. fun out of it, because it's like, I, like, in, by the way, Robert <laughs> Eggers is a, you know, he's a craftsman, but like, uh -huh. it took out yeah. some of the fun out of like, oh, well, I kind of know where this is going now. <laughs> yeah. And we see like that, uh, I think we see in the trailer, Robert Pattinson see that dead body that we find out later. He killed him. And took oh. his identity. He was just like, well, he's got a fresh start. <laughs> yeah. Well, what was his name before? Like, uh, uh, y'all never did that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, um, it was Thomas something. Oh yeah. Cause, yeah, because like yeah. Willem Dafoe was Thomas. He's like, got me, got me Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> we gotta talk about Willem Dafoe. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many things. Which, by the way, there has to be a thing. Why do so many directors want him oh, to get naked? You. Like so many directors are just like, Willem, if you're in my movie, you're going to get naked. <laughs> like, <After you're> naked. <laughs> you gotta show it all. You gotta give your whole self to this. Yeah. To yeah. While having glowing freaking eyes. And, and then Robert, Robert's like, well, I mean, I can, I can help out with that life. I'm just like yeah. fetching coal and like throwing our dumping out our like <laughs> pee buckets and all that. He's like, no, <laughs> that's my life. <laughs> uh, uh, your impression like, is great, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you, like the way you hold your face. <laughs> the, the, the phone and like, but that first time, like, oh, gross. I think it was. We see the tentacles at first, maybe when Robert was like going up the stairs to the light to kind of spy on Willem Dafoe and find some other nasty supplies. His syrup, I think it was. Uh, um, 
No, no, you <laughs> no. I'm, I'm serious. Uh, <laughs> what do you guys think that he saw in, in the light? Because I heard that even in the script, uh, the actors don't know what they were seeing. Really? In the light. Yeah, he, he purposely wrote it without saying what was actually what they were seeing in the light. Uh, mm. It had to have been pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, enough <laughs> to make sure. Right. I mean, honestly, when directors do that, I know it's going to be a controversial pain. I think they don't know. Like, whenever Tarantino's <laughs> like, I know <laughs> what's in the. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro, you do not know. <laughs> like, that's the whole reason. Exactly. Like, yeah. It's up for interpretation. Yeah. As in, um, somebody give me ideas. <laughs> I don't know what it's for. He's like, Willem, so what, so what do you think you see? Because I know what's in there, but. Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> I planned it out, I think. Yeah. Oh, cause that, yeah, that's the one thing that I I kind of didn't like that one aspect of it. Yeah. Cause it's one of those things where it's like, did you guys see Under the Silver Lake? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where yeah, it's like yeah. the director, he shot a scene three different times, mm -hmm. and he told like Andrew Garfield what the right answer was for interpretation, mm -hmm. but he couldn't tell anyone. And I felt like it just played a little better. Oh, like, yeah, like yeah. certain yeah. scenes in this movie, you can tell when the actor is like, it's like when Mark Wahlberg plays a scientist in The Happening, uh -huh. where it's just like, Mark Wahlberg doesn't know science. Yeah. I'm sure he's a smart guy <laughs> in another area, but I don't believe him. Yeah, there were like, certain scenes they're looking at where I was like, I don't believe that they know what's in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, because like, how are you supposed to act like, how are you supposed to, I mean, maybe that's like, maybe that's the beauty in it. It's like, even the characters themselves, not the actors, but the characters don't know what's so appealing about it. It's just a big mm. ball of light that, it shines in their eyes, but that's it's so interesting that even like the actors didn't even know. Yeah. They just like, so what am I looking at in the scene? And he's like, figure it out. <laughs> what yeah. do you think you're looking at? He's like, can you please just tell me? I mean, I gotta, I gotta be at a Twilight Part Two at three. Oh. I, was, I was surprised this movie did as well as it did in the box office. I mean, being yeah. the, you know the ratio of it, and also it being in black and white. Oh yeah. You know, I didn't no, even I notice mean, that until I was watching. I was almost done. I was like. This, this whole thing's been in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even notice. <laughs> well, I think it's just the marketing off of The Witch, too. Oh, where yeah. Where it's just one of those things where I think, you know, when you have a hit like that. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I know I referenced earlier his conversation with Ari Aster. Oh, but they yeah. even talk about they, the come up is pretty similar. Like, one of them did Hereditary, one of them did The Witch, and, like, they had this kind of splash. But I was just talking to, actually, uh, Keegan uh, earlier about this, where it was like they kind of split, where it's like Robert Eggers made kind of one of the more masculine movies. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most masculine movies you could watch, where it's already one of the more feminine directions. Direction. Yeah. And I really feel like, and it's pretty funny because Robert Eggers is obviously a man, but I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> and I do like this movie, but I feel like Ari Aster did a much better job with like a feminine type of story than mm -hmm. he did with a masculine type of story. Yeah. I feel like there were more things he kind of could have delved into. And I still really loved in this movie. Oh, yeah. I just feel yeah. like the whole masculinity part of it, I was like, well, if you're going to do it, like, I feel <laughs> like you can, there's it. more stuff you could do with the whole masculinity yeah, thing. Yeah. I, s I suppose there's a lot of it in there. And, uh, that's all it was, really. yeah. <laughs> except the mermaid. Do you, I think that he, you know, with the masculinity stuff, I think he just kind of took from Persona by uh, Ivan Berkman, you know, because yeah. uh, it's kind of like kind of similar plots, you know, two people, uh, at least two women in that one. Uh -huh. And they're both on a, an island in a house, and then they both start losing and trying to figure out who each other is. And I remember uh, they were doing the podcast. You were talking about the podcast with A24. Yeah. You know, they kept referencing uh, different uh, different of his movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. But I was just <laughs> 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 but, you know, if, yeah, if you were looking for a conclusion to that. But, yeah, uh, I, I just feel like there's so much going on in this movie that, like, it's just so hard to try to. There's so much going on, and a lot of it is really good. But a lot of it, I feel like it could have been tightened. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like for like, and maybe I need to watch another theory video about it <laughs> because like I feel like at some it just it went on for so long, and I'm just like, so uh, what's what's going on here? And and I don't I guess I'm still having a hard time processing how everything like ties in together, especially at the end because it's all kind of abrupt and like yeah. very inconspicuous. And like he's you know he starts to bury Willem Dafoe, and then he's like, ran you know, he jumps up and like gets him with an axe, and then. Um, and then he kills him with that same axe, right? Yeah, Robert Pattinson yeah. does. And he's like, I'm going to go see that freaking light. <laughs> and then he goes all the way up there, opens it up, and I, what, that's, what was about it? No. No, he falls <laughs> yeah. down the stairs. Yeah, and then he yeah. falls down yeah. the stairs. This is a cool shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, it was just like, oop, <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> and, yeah, that, the, and nobody knows what's in this light. I got to know. <laughs> yeah, um, someone told me, or at least someone's uh, interpretation of the ending was just that he came kind of like a... Uh, What's his name? Uh, Prometheus. Mm -hmm. uh, Prometheus was also, you know, uh, stuck to Plip, and then uh, seagulls came and started eating his inside, you know, his insides, and how like the movie oh, ends right. with that. 
I forgot about that part. Oh, I don't yeah. Know, yeah, I don't know if that's like what the director wanted, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or if that's just what just nah. what's so happened. It's like one of those things where it's like, I feel like if he made a title, he could have more of a point. It's like this movie is, I'm sure you guys would probably agree, it's like an 8.75. That is this close to being a 10. Like, it's yeah, this close. Yeah. But, like, it's like you just got to tighten it up. It reminds me of, like, Paul Thomas Anderson did, like, a horror movie. Yeah. That's what I feel like it would feel like. <laughs> yeah. Well, next week we're talking about Spike Lee films, which uh -huh. his films are awesome. Of we're course. gonna be talking about Do the Right Thing, because we have to talk about that one. She's got to have it going back to the first one and <laughs> Black Cut Cut Klansman. And that came out recently. It did. Yes, it mm -hmm. did. Yeah. Well, yeah. I hope you guys have a great one, and we will see you next time. Uh huh.